Tourism and Travel to 2022. Um, Today, uh, I wanted to thank all our speakers and colleagues from, from the different parts of the Earth, in spite of the time difference and long being uh, distance, uh, today they are with us. Now, I want to give the floor to Kelly Torres, guide from uh, Brazil. <laughs> Hello, Kelly. Can you hear us? Sim. Yes, the floor is can yours. Hear very well. I was here listening to Grace's presentation. Thank you so much. Awesome. Congratulations, Grace. Thank you so much, all of you, for creating this opportunity for us. I think this is one of the best outcomes that we could take of these times that we've been living, of connecting locally, right? Beyond local, locally and global wise. So I'm really happy and excited to be here. And thank you, Itamar, also for uh, pointing this out. I think it's not every day that South Americans can connect with people from other countries uh, in Europe, West Europe, East Europe, and Asia, and so on. Uh, my name is Kelly Tavares, and I am a tour guide here in Rio de Janeiro. I'm I love what I do, and I guess most of the people who are here present also does that, because I think that being a tour guide, a travel agent is very um, kind of, it, it resonates with the life spirit, free spirit that we have a tendency to be and to have. I love traveling, therefore I love to sh travel with other people to show other people my culture, because I really love uh, my people. And I'd like to, I hope that I can present to you here a little bit of what is uh, this passion and how I can inform and inspire you and support on sharing a little bit of the case studies that we've been taking out of this COVID and post COVID uh, times that we are at. So I'm here based in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. It's a big city in South America. And I will be talking about the different interfaces of technology and tourism and how I was walking this path as many of you have been. And adding to that inside of the responsible tourism, community-based, aligned with a sustainable tourism, I think all of that will be tied together in the mission of the work I do with Rio and Cantos. So for those of you who are interested in getting to know more about me, uh, I'm part of a network of tour guides locally and also global-wise. And we focus on Afro-tourism, Black History Walks. We are connected also around the world. And this is mainly because Brazil is a nation where 70% of the population is self-declared from Black ancestry, besides also of indigenous and European um, backgrounds. What we get globally and when we travel, we see that is that most of the time, the community-based culture, the majority of the culture in the world will people in the world will create culture, will do culture. But what is promoted is as the culture makers as not the main protagonists, but as attractions. So it's a new time in the world of tourism, of experiences, where the attractions of tourism, where, which were objectified people with their talents, now where they are taking over this protagon protagonism and expressing themselves more and more, and that will create, uh, that is a new trend, and it's creating a shift in tourism around the world. It's having the voices of indigenous people as tour guides, uh, people of different heritage living in, in their countries, in the suburbs, in the peripheries, uh, sharing what they can from their culture and making their living as, as tour guides. So this will 
wide open our perspectives of what is tourism in the world. And with a camera now uh, connected on live streams, this is being more and more uh, feeding into this trend. And now we can follow in people from favelas, the slums, tribes, they will have, despite of the, the challenges with technology access or Wi-Fi antennas uh, for broadcasting, despite of that challenges, you find influences of all over the place sharing their own perspective without having to rely only on official agencies that will privilege uh, where the money and the power is located and not necessarily where the culture makers are present. So then when we talk about technology, we talk about spreading that word through different media and transmedia. And what I will share uh, now with you is a few solutions that we, I came up with within the help and support and motivation of other tour guides as well. As we enter the lockdown, we were wondering, wow, what are we going to make? What's going to happen? And I'm, I've never been a person of really uh, uh, lowering my head and crying. And I navigated through this. And what I did, I opened up books and I said, I'm going to first travel through these books and find the world that sometimes we are too busy to find out. So that's my advice for many of you. Travel virtually, open a book when you feel lost, depressed, you know, don't know. Don't need to uh, cross beyond the red light of the, the traffic light. You just open a book, take your time, read that book that is in your bookshelf. And now you have options of open a virtual uh, live stream platform and travel the world from your place before going to the place. This is an actual a privileged position that many of us will have today before going to a destination. If you don't know Brazil, if you don't know Bahia, we have a tour guide in Salvador, friend of mine, Sayuri Koshima, who does live streams there. And you want to know what is Bahia? What is Rio de Janeiro? Uh, is that safe? Will there be uh, places for me? Is there infrastructure? Is there art? What's going to happen there? Now you can actually connect with guides like us, like Grace, like Itamar in Israel, uh, before going to get the travel tips you need to see, uh, to base, basically commission a trip if you want before going. If you're a travel agent, a tour operator, you can come to us and say, Kelly, I would love to see how is uh, Rio, uh, not only the highlights, but the off the beaten paths and a little bit of that. What is your guiding style? What's your narrative? How can you share your passion to my group? And if you have a, like an education group, researchers, architects, artists, seniors, children, you can before bringing this group to a far destination, you can already have a FaceTime with the tour guide in local. We will we'll have a gimbal, a camera, and uh, cell phones. And we will help you to connect with the protagonists of the culture in the goal as we go. We can either arrange a presentation, a perform, or we can go to performs that already happen in a constant base at a samba school, at a music party, as a musician's performance, as a chef who is, will cook a dinner, at a lecture, at a museum, and or to the forest, depending on where we go. And we can offer all of that before you come. It means that you can, for sure, ensure a very good trip by knowing exactly what are you going to get before having these snippets of what a larger, a longer tour will be in Brazil. All right, so then uh, we were locked at home and the 
streaming technology uh, had re really moved and pushed themselves forward during COVID times. So now we talk about metaverse, meta tourism, 3D, uh, technology for producing 3D images. So soon, and if these, uh, uh, if I was longer for a longer time in lockdown, probably I would even now be doing metaverse, but I'm glad I'm not be need to do that at this moment. And I will be looking forward to learn more about that uh creating content around that but for now tourism is back in rio de janeiro we have been guiding every week and the tour guides of our network and we're receiving visitors uh from all over the world so it's really um, happy to be present in the fields because i love to be doing that besides planning trips as well all right so please feel free to ask me any questions throughout as I present. Uh, feel free to interrupt me and uh, interact because I will be presenting different uh, interfaces, media and platforms, or also at the end, you can ask me questions and I can get back to the tabs and places where I developed each of these technologies. Uh, so, I'm going to share now here with you my first trial with the virtual tourism. Can you share, can you see my screen here? Yes. Okay, good. So I, uh, when I first started saying how can I share what I know, what I do, what I love, with the people from all over the world so they can have an opportunity to also support me and be present and continuous beyond lo being locally, but globally, understanding and outreaching to different audiences around the world. Uh, how can I do that? So I've researched a few resources and I came up with one that is very used by geographers, historians, storytellers is the story maps from ArcGIS, which is a very good resource where I mounted my first uh, virtual tour, something that we could do in 100% lockdown inside of our places. So I prepared this presentation where we can tie um, videos, texts, links, and also maps. We can work basically, uh, and we can choose different formats to co go with that, presenting maps of the world, having a focus on the map, if you're a geographer, if you focus on that, or if you're a storyteller, having a focus on the images that we'll be working with. So then I prepared this route that I make live here on tours, which is the... Um, Black History Walks in Rio in the port area with street art. And then in this beautiful map, you see here Brazil in South America. And we've set up the different points where we give the tour. And as we move on the presentation, we go to different other stops and you can add different media. So that was a good resource to add some of the content that I created before the pandemics. Videos that you can tie to, videos that you created, and then you can show the route in more details as well to show where you are, why you walk, and what is really a good resource for when you are giving presentations to schools, for example, and you are presenting some of the works you do, people can follow up through these maps. Okay, so that was a first step and a good resource that I leave there for you guys uh, who wants to prepare a material that can even be shared with some of your clients. So if I have a client that I say, I do the Black History Walk and Street Art, so what is this about? Can you give me a description? So this could be a description, a presentation of itinerary, which is 
transmedia filled with great resources, with video with myself talking and with different uh, maps and so on. All right, but that wasn't really enough for a long time, a long period of lockdown where we needed to keep pushing ourselves to follow all the innovations on technology. And as Ronnie, as many other live stream platforms were shaping themselves, I was researching different opportunities and possibilities. I don't know how many of you here are aware of the audio guides for streets, but audio guides is really common in museums. And I, am a, I have a background in arts education running tours in museums. I've uh, worked as a, a guide and interpreter at the Museum of uh, Natural History, National Museum in Brazil, also museums in Oregon, uh, in Eugene, where I studied at the University of Oregon. And then I have experience on that. And audio guides is something really cool, which um, sometimes can be um, triggered by as you move through the rooms at a museum. But there are apps that were invented, which also were uh, pushed forward and fed into uh, with contents, such as voice map. Now there are others as well. And which is a company with many people and offices based also in South Africa. And there, I, when I entered, I saw, let me check what they have about Brazil. And they had one tour in Sao Paulo and none in Rio de Janeiro. All right, so I said, mm, that's gonna be interesting because then I could have a short tour. And again, since this is a tour that I run a lot, I have a lot of contents about long years of research on it. So I'm gonna start with a tour which is not a mainstream tour of Rio de Janeiro because when many people think about Rio, they think about Soccer, what else? When you talk about Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, what do you think? What are the words that come out to your mind when you think about tourism in Rio de Janeiro? Carnival time. Carnival. What else? Thanks for participating. I'm curious to know from you. Brazil. Football. What, what? Football. It's ball, yes. Beaches, right? Uh, animals, sunny skies, all, always sunny skies. Today here is gray, it's cloudy and it's rainy. And then uh, that's a, another cool thing about live stream tours is that it's on the go. So if you, Sometimes you are at a site and you are live streaming that. Maybe you can start the rain coming or the sky can be gray. And then what do you do if you're traveling in Rio? You need to show the options of the things that you can do in a rainy day, in a place that you imagine and everybody created that is only sunny, hot and blue sky. But we have a cultural attractions and attractions for all the days rainy, sunny, not snowy because we don't have. But then the audio guys getting back to here. I saw, wow, this could be a great resource. Look at that. People come, they can read about the tour, Black History Walk and Street Art, have a description, a presentation about myself. So it's another channel to spread the word, a word about the work I do. There will be many tours around Europe in America, in North America, but not almost any in South America. Mm, okay. So I could bring one of my off the beaten path and essential tours to this platform and represent this narrative, this storytelling in Rio de Janeiro and be present on this other interface, which is, uh, so a lot of new things that we invest on there is a planned risk. There are planned risks. If we don't take the chance and time or money to uh, navigate through new endeavors, 
in spite of the risks we we share, we won't move forward. We will just replicate and continue doing the th same thing. So research innovation has the unknown fields of, for example, do you think that's gonna really be something in the future? Uh, will I have any money with that? Will that help me anyways during uh, the pandemic's time? So these were all questions. But since I was in lockdown, without any possibility of working, I said, you know what? This is the moment of learning how to handle this, of getting inside, preparing the script and going for it. I'm investing my time on this and this is gonna be here present for an opportunity like this, for example, to share possibilities that can be used for numerous ways in your countries and to, who knows? For now, it's still a, not a top sales thing, but who knows in five years or maybe not, but anyway, so you have another possibility of traveling. And this is something that you can, from where you are, download to your phone, the app Voice Map. I also have another partner here from Brazil, who is a company from Sao Paulo. They also created their own uh, app. And I have in Portuguese and English, you can download that to your phone. And from where you are, you can listen you can look at this map and you can see on the stops what you will find and my storytelling throughout it. If you were here present, you would, as you walk around, this is GPS oriented. And as you walk around and you start at the starting point, you would hear my voice making the presentation. And as you walk following the directions and you step by the second stop of the street, the app would automatically load my voice and say, stop here for a moment, look around, and I will point you out the landmarks of that place, the history, the curiosities, as a, if I was there with you. So this is amazing. And it's something, it's, it's really something really cool that was very developed. And for example, here, I don't know if you'll be able to hear the sound, please let me know, but you can preview the tour and listen to my voice here. So if you want to try in a voice map. Welcome to Rio de Janeiro in Trasamauá. Can you hear my voice? My name is Kelly Tavares and I will guide you through Little Africa. Yes. yes. The port area is full of secrets of a hidden history that once uncovered can tell the forgotten stories of the fascinating part of this city. This is the key tool to understanding Brazilian people and culture. I'm a qualified tour guide and found... So then note, I gave you this snippet, so you can have this idea of when you enter the, 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 the website, the app, you can, before downloading the tool, you can listen to my voice to see if you connect with it, if you like the way I narrate, if you are interested on my presentation, and if you want to purchase that. And note, I had no idea how to do that before when I first started. I had to go out of my comfort zone. I had no studio at home. Uh, I did have a, a, a microphone, what is needed to do it. And uh, I connected with the people in the platform, asked for instructions. And then I created a studio inside of my closet, which is a tiny closet inside of my bedroom. And I had to create a whole a environment to be able to record this, putting blankets, uh, sleeping bags to create the perfect environment to have the sound uh, interruptions to it. So this is another cool thing that I highly uh, encourage you to try new paths because as I usually say, life will be challenging us throughout uh, throughout life as we go. So uh, we can really get accommodated in any path because we can be challenged by a pandemics or uh, by time, by I don't know. And we got to be ready for, you know, overcoming the challenges. All right. So that was another good cool thing that I was able to produce and I produced it in two different platforms, three now.
And then I was also part, I am also part and colleague of the Viari Travel. Another, another possibility that we came up with was what we can do, a crowdfunding for something really cool, a travel book to Brazil. Look at a great idea to do during lockdown. You're locked at home, creating a book about the routes and guides and protagonists of these routes would be a great idea. So we did a crowdfunding, each guide, and I'm present on this book as well, each guide was able to collaborate, participate with a recipe of their destination to invite one of the chefs of the restaurants where we take place people to. And like I said, I work with responsible tourism. It means that instead of bringing visitors uh, to big chain restaurants of uh, rich people in the south zone where the beaches are located, I will create partnerships with the smaller business owners who for the most part will live in that neighborhood, will have their small restaurants for the most of the time in those neighborhoods. They will have their own chef, cook that food with love, and they will be sharing their recipes. So these are the people who will be present on this, this book. Are uh, these chefs who are our partners? Are the routes, so there's a description about the route that we, 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 we go and where we give tours. And my face there as a tour guide. Hi, I'm Kelly Tavares, tour guide in Rio de Janeiro, and I'm gonna share with you a recipe of the caipirinha, which is a internationally known drink, official drink of Brazil, made out of lime, lime, cachaça, and that not all Brazilians know how to do it. But as a tour guide running the cachaça and caipirinha tours, I can give you that official recipe. So this is, was a, may, a very beautiful project, collective project that I'm also proud of. Uh, do I have any questions so far? I saw the question in chat. Uh, I'm sharing the screen. I don't know how to open the chat <laughs> when I'm sharing the screen. I will read it. Thank uh, you, Zarina. There is a question from Grace. Uh, what do you need to prepare uh, the tour on WiseMap? The process until you have it published there. Uh, okay. Well, it was a long process for me, more than one month and a half, because it was something new. Now I would make it in a smaller uh at time, but voice map is very good at giving in their websites the instructions on how to do it. They have a step-by-step -step nuts and bolts on how to make your audio guide. So if you follow everything, plus the staff is really, uh, they know how hard work that can be for uh, a, a beginner. So they provide all the support for you. So they will be revealing your script. They will be a providing tips besides of the, the manuals they have on the website, but also meeting with you and providing the tips on how to make the good audio recording, a, a nice script, and how to set up here on the map. They will help you with everything, Grace. So they're good at that. So that's why I, for those of you who want to create and have this, uh, I recommend starting with a voice map, okay? Um, thank you. Thanks, Kelly. You're welcome. If you have any other specific question, I will be happy to also answer. One thing that I really would like to call attention for all of you, uh, I know many of you are from Europe, are in Europe, and, and tourism is also very driven on this aspect. I will stop um, a little bit the presentation here, soon I will present again is about the Eurocentric views of our global society. This compromised a lot the destinations, which all destinations in the world, and in many places, they will have amazing attractions because where there are people, there is culture. But because of the power of money and media that Europe and North America has, it ends up that destinations that sometimes are even less interesting 
that some destination in Africa, in India, in Argentina, in Colombia, in Brazil, they will gain much more a uh, place of interest in the global marketing for tourism. So it's very important to get rid of the prejudices, take your chance, and especially now with so many interfaces and platforms where you can connect with local guides to see places beforehand. It's very important to acknowledge that we were educated in a moment where Americanization, Americanization of our minds, of our educational systems, of our policies is really huge. So we buy into the, the, since the colonization, since 1700s, 1800s, 1900s on, there are centuries of education towards Europe, of acknowledging Europe as the center of the world. And we can see that in the map, the representation of the Mapa Mundi, uh, acknowledging uh, North America as the place to be, as the products to buy from, as the places to go to. And sometimes we will see like Lisbon, we will receive more tourists uh, than Brazil. And when you look at that in the map and you look at how many things we have to offer, and unfortunately that will impact the economies of these places and that won't really be tied to an, a, what we call a sustainable tourism because we are keeping the focus, the money, the interest in Europe and North America as if the rest of the world didn't exist. And that will impact also in the different interfaces. So when you enter voice map, when you enter Hegel and you present to different live streams platforms, you see that mostly people will be watching and will have access also to technology and we'll see much more the Torre Eiffel, the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower in Paris, than being interested in getting to know another, other people around the world. People will be more interested in the Colosseum in Italy than uh, understanding what's going on in the arts in Argentina. So, and that's not a coincidence. Understand that that is education through centuries. And we need to go beyond that because that will open up our eyes to different perspectives, to connect with other people around the world. And I can assure you from personal experience that yeah, that broads our frontiers and takes us beyond. The world is really big. Now, I would like, do you have any question from here before I continue sharing other interface? Yeah, I'll just say that uh, I think that virtual tourism actually changed, kind of broke that a little bit. And you all of a sudden saw destinations you probably never heard of become very, very popular. Uh, that's something I noticed. Exactly. And that's the, why, that's the reason why we need to take advantage of this new era to move forward and try out. Give yourself some time to try. Itamar is here present. Uh, thank you, Itamar, for opening up your camera. He is always, we are part of this uh, virtual group of guides around the globe now. So if we come up to the WhatsApp group in our phone and we ask, hey, I need a guide in Morocco. Do you know someone who is really cool? So you don't need to take the risk anymore and go without knowing anybody or without knowing a travel agent. You already have someone there who probably will be talking to you directly in the group and say, hi, me. And you go and you check how good they are on a virtual tour, on the contents they produce on media. And here, for example, I'm gonna share with you one of the platforms which really uh, became like a, uh, a model of uh, development on live streaming platforms because of the resource they pull up and they have access to also GPS maps. And as you run a virtual live stream tours here with your camera on your phone, as you walk, there will be a map showing up where you are in the world. And here I'm present here as well. Sayuri Koshima from Salvador. Grace is also present. Itamar is also here. I don't know if other people present on this um, uh, forum today is also on Hegel. 
but there are many others today uh, with different resources and possibilities. Hey, go doesn't offer you like a FaceTime. It's mostly the guide with the camera on site. But there are places where you can have the FaceTime as we are having now while I walk with my camera. And here I created many experiences showing Rio's botanical gardens, parks. I go into trips where I go to Salvador or to other places and I meet other guides and I do the show with other guides together to present their works, their destinations, going to places where many, sometimes many tourists will come in a short time and they just go for the highlights. To these, I show some of the beaten paths that you could ever imagine that you could enjoy in Brazil. But then we go for that virtually, and then that could be a choice for you for when you come to curate your trip. And I recommend you to come. And I can share all of these links with you in my link tree at, as soon when I finish the presentation. Uh, how many minutes do we have for the, the questions? I don't want, want to really take time of the question time as well, discussion time. Maybe we have enough time. We can continue. Okay. All right. Uh, now I would like to share this platform with you. I'm Like I told you, I focus here in Brazil and our uh, Black History Walks and um, Afro-Brazilian destinations, it doesn't mean it's only for Black people. It's for, it's about my Black ancestry and also Indigenous ancestry. Because in school, I had enough of my European ancestry. I had a lot of that and I had none or anything about my heritage because that is erased in history. And I'm traveling to the U.S. and traveling to Europe, traveling South America, I notice the same thing, the same trend. Many tour guides will end up focusing on the big heritage sites of construction of European buildings or telling and forgetting to acknowledge their roots, sometimes even the indigenous and black roots. So talking about environmental tourism, responsible tourism is acknowledging that because that is where the smaller businesses are located, the entrepreneurs, the people who want to make a living of their talents are present. So here on this platform, which was like an Airbnb, Airbnb, Black Airbnb, is following a global trend of the same people who are looking for that kind of responsible tourism, of those narratives. So this is a whole global trend that Black travel movement is coming to go, it's coming here to stay. And then once you travel with those lenses, understanding who are the people in your country, who are the originary people that were erased from the, your storybooks, from your classes. And when you acknowledge that, you bring that to light and you share that with people. When you start traveling again, you will see and you seek for these things that won't be obvious on your steps they, because they will be hidden all the time. And then the uh, Diaspora Black website is created in Brazil by my today my friends. When I, they created that six years ago, uh, I said, you are doing something very important. I want to be by your side because I know the importance of what you're doing. So these are the businesses that really to be supported because they have a potential for creating uh, income and to generating income for direct population on the base and narratives that are all, not only on the mainstream and that and unfortunately is still is not easy to find when you go to a place because the marketing power of the big companies will be on the top of Google, even though they might not be the best ones to offer you what we can offer. So from here, we will find people all over Brazil who will offer you experiences and accommodations on tourism. 
creating partnerships with local businesses, local restaurants, also black owned or indigenous people in their tribes, promoting tourism instead of being a big agency doing that, they themselves uh, uh, trained, studied for a qualified tour guide and will be reception you in the, the uh, communities, sharing moments with you, sharing their food, sharing their house. And this is really special. This is connected with environmental tourism. And this is the place where I travel to as a tour guide. Now talking about var variations of live stream platforms, I uh, one from Israel, this is uh, the Amphi group. They are also new, uh, mostly based on education and virtual education where your schools or company can uh, ask someone to teach you something virtually. They now uh, broaden their space to include guides from all over the world creating the place category. And through them, you have access to a Zoom like we are doing here on the forum, extending this friendship, creating these partnerships and having a FaceTime with your guide. So we can come from our places where we are or from a camera going to the different destinations. I created here a few tours such as the virtual tour, the Darwin's Paths in Rio de Janeiro, Charles Darwin. Rio de Janeiro is just about Christ Redeemer, beaches, carnival, and soccer. I would say, yes, you are right, but you need to go deeper into these adventures. My name is Kelly Tavares, and I'm a tour guide here in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. My background is in visual arts and education, and I'm also a professional guide here in Rio de Janeiro, qualified to take you to different places in town. Rio de Janeiro, it's such a big city. There are so many things going on and it's a very dynamic and diverse city as well. So what are you waiting for? Come with me, come on this virtual trip, book tours with me and you'll find out a variety of other things and tips. Oops, let me put my charger here on my laptop. Sorry about that. So then, charging. So then when you come here, you can have access to places, destinations that could be interested in. I also run tours in the museums. And you can commission here on as well. Like in Discover Live, for example, another uh, partner platform from North America, they uh, will say, uh, Kelly, do you run any tours around this topic? Uh, do you have any specialization on that? Or could you go to the place? And sometimes I tailor, it's tailor made and I do that for them, creating these opportunities for their different groups and clients. Like Grace said, we can put up different uh, experiences with guides on the globe from our network and also locally where we are. Do you have any questions? All right, so um, I, uh, I do have a question then for you. Uh, I want to I mean, then... I ask you what? Okay, I have a question for you. Could you came up with me from where you are and based on the things I said, uh, could you imagine your country in your own community, places that are not on the lenses of the mainstream tourism, but which you recognize as a rich cultural place where you would love visitors to take visitors to, would some of you share the name of what would be this place and why you think visitors should go and take a little bit more time in your country, in your destination to go see that place. Would you uh, help me participating on that? I can repeat the question if you, if you want as well. Mm -hmm. 
Зарин, переведи, пожалуйста. Uh, can you please repeat the question because my sound is uh, disappeared, that's why. Okay, so the question is, uh, based on the things I said, responsible tourism, community-based tourism, narratives beyond uh, the mainstream attractions from official tourism in your country. So many times a visitor will come to your country, they will come, ah, I will go to Rio de Janeiro, stay just three days in Rio de Janeiro. Because they think that Corcovado, Christ Redeemer, the beach, and the carnival in one day will be enough. But as a tour guide, a travel agent in your country, is there a place, a special place in your community where you think, oh, I would love to take visitors to this place. I think they, if they knew this place, they would understand more about my culture. Is that that place in your country? Would you share that here? And share why do you think that place is important? Она говорит, что вот на основе всего, чего я рассказала сегодня, да, можете ли вы представить такое место? Есть ли в вашей стране такое место, которое вы бы хотели бы показать да, людям, туристам, там, и которым вы бы очень хотели поделиться? Тут такое вот особое место. Есть ли в вашей стране? Окей. There is an answers in chat we have. Uh, Professor Osama Ibrahim, he says that, uh, yes, Nazar Lake behind the Greek Dam on the Nile, Egypt. It's also Fayum and Sita Oasis in the Western Desert, Egypt. In Azerbaijan, they said ecotourism, historical tourism. So then Grace said Argentina is a huge country. People go to uh, Iguazu Falls and uh, Patagonia, but uh, there are so many places to see, like the North, uh, the Cuibrada, the Huma Humahuca. As the Incan Trail, also uh, Esteros del Ibera. So, Simona says Bulgarian traditional dinner. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> okay, Nail Sadikov, he says Sheki region, uh, have Sheki Khan Palace, Bio gar Garden, maybe, ATC. So the spirit of Israel is in books, so probably visiting a yeshiva. Thank you so much for your contributions. I see some of you are shy to open your cameras, your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> then in yes, Ukraine. Orally, but not in written. <laughs> also uh, in Ukraine, uh, Alona says that the river uh, Dnipro uh, Flute paints overgrown with needs uh, with reeds and uh, shrubs, uh, low ban banks of river and island fluter in spring. So the whole Dominican Republic, especially the southwest, Mr. Uh, Romano says. So Elia says. Tufandan's Lake, Tufandan Lake uh, and Fire Temple in uh, Kina. Elia, Na help us I don't with know. the pronunciation. Elia. Yeah. Open <laughs> your, your mic. <laughs> yeah, please. They so. Let us hear your voice so we can pronounce right and make uh, the best for your place's name. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It would be nice if they can. Good evening. Hello. Themselves. 
<laughs> Hello to everybody. I'm Hello. so sorry for, for these very difficult sorry. names. Okay, that one is Tufan Dar Lake, uh, just a lake uh, between the mountains. Uh, even it's very cold, freezing cold uh, in uh, hot summer days. And uh, Fire Temple with natural fire in Khnalak. Both of them are located in Khnalak uh, territory, a village, uh, which is up uh, 2,300 meters uh, below the uh, sea level. And what about the next one is Azakh Cave in Fizuli region in Azerbaijan, which is the most uh, ancient uh, caves, uh, one of the most ancient caves in Azerbaijan. Wow, thank okay. you. That makes a big thank difference, you. right? Yeah, <laughs> when you don't know, it's very hard to make a right pronunciation. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, so I saw here many people participating uh, very, because when we talk about our places, our names, what we do, we feel like motivated of that, having that participation of sharing our narratives, our stories. So that's why you got really all into it here, writing and typing. I want to share my place. That's beautiful. And the name it what gives life to places, your place that you shared here is earning some life for me because you are sharing that and not only here to speak, but to exchange and change. That's what tourism is all about as well. And be going beyond the names, the sustainable tourism, responsible tourism is community-based because of course you might have different styles of traveling. Sometimes you want just to go somewhere, clean your mind and be at a nature, go to a temple, don't talk much, just enjoy silence and sightseeing. But some people, they get so much out of traveling and connecting with others. And that's also a very nice sustainable way of traveling. So keeping the, your paths with the last carbon tracks possible, uh, connecting with people with smaller businesses, learning some new words in a language to demonstrate that you want to go beyond, that you want a next level. So when you mention these places here, and I've heard places such as um, dinners somewhere. So if you have a dinner, you have dinner with other people. So you eat with other people that you get to know in that place. So you want to connect with others. And when I um, talk about our network, for example, I have another friend and partner, uh, Caroline from Guiadas Urbanas, who created something here in Rio de Janeiro that 10 years ago when she was creating the Guiadas Urbanas, I said, what you're doing is unique. 10 years ago, she was creating tourism in the suburbs, in the peripheries, in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro. Because most of the tourism will take place in Rio de Janeiro. It's going to be in the south zone where the big apartments and in a lot of infrastructure is, with, where the politicians live and have their houses, where the, the big people with big money will have their residences as well. Therefore, if they live in the south zone in front of the beach and they have their businesses there and they are making the policies around 